In this video, you'll learn the Blender workflow to retopologize a high poly asset and then bake the details from the high poly mesh to the low poly one using normal maps. To begin retopology, start with adding a plane and align it in front of the mesh. Place it on one side of the mesh and add a mirror modifier on the symmetry axis so that you only have to work on one side. Remember to turn on clipping so as to allow vertex snapping and prevent mesh overlapping. Add a few base edge loops and align them to the mesh to begin with. Once that's done, go to the snapping option in the top center and select face snapping. Remember to enable this snapping by clicking the magnet button beside it. As we want to snap our faces to the high pally mesh, select a vertex and press G. Without moving the mouse, click on the same place. This sticks the first vertex to the mesh. Repeat this step for the rest of the vertices. Check the snap once you're done to make sure. Continue this by adding more edge loops where needed and snapping the vertices. Every new face you create will automatically snap to the mesh. If any correction is needed, you can snap those vertices manually using the G button. After the retopology is done, apply the mirror modifier and add a shrink wrap modifier to this mesh. In the target, add the high poly mesh. This makes the low poly mesh take the shape of the high poly mesh and match the vertex locations to some extent. Now let's project the details from the high poly mesh to the low poly one using a normal map. Create a new material for the low poly mesh. Add a normal map node and also an image texture node. Create a new image in this and put in the texture size you want. Turn off alpha as we don't need it. Make sure to change the color space to non-color data. This bakes accurate values in our normal map. We'll connect the nodes to the principal shader and set up a few necessary settings to bake our map. Turn to the cycles render engine and reduce the render samples to 32 as we don't need more than that.
Turn on denoising and go to the bake submenu. Select the normal bake type and check selected to active. Set the max ray distance to something between 0.3 and 0.5. You can play with this value later after checking the texture. Check the cage option, and we'll now create a cage. Duplicate your low poly mesh and name it cage. Add a new material to it and give it a unique color, so that you can differentiate it from the other objects. Remember to remove the shrink wrap modifier for this cage, and scale it out a bit. This mesh will be used to calculate all the ray bounces to bake our texture map. Go to the Sculpt mode and use the Inflate brush to pull out areas, which are still under the other meshes. The low poly and high poly meshes must be entirely covered by this cage mesh. To cover the mouth, don't add any new meshes, because the cage and the low poly mesh must have the same number of faces. Instead we'll try to close up the open space as much as possible. The last thing left to do is to UV unwrap the mesh for our normal map. Add seams where necessary and press unwrap. Go back to the shading tab to finally bake our texture. Make sure to add your cage mesh to the cage object field in the menu. First select your high poly mesh, then hold control and select the low poly mesh. Both of them must be highlighted, with the low poly material in front of you. Select your image texture node and press bake. Wait a few moments for it to bake, and check your normal map once it's done. Be sure that there are no unwanted seams appearing on the mesh. And that's it, you have all the details, and lowest poly count ready for animation. Thanks for watching, if you learned something new, leave a like, and subscribe if you would like to see more.